welcome to the Creative Obsession Podcast. My name is Carrie, and I am filming in my home studio uh, just outside of Portland, Oregon. Today is Thursday, December 14th, 2017. Thank you for joining me. I hope you're all enjoying whatever holiday season that you celebrate. Um, it's kind of a crazy time of year for a lot of people. So I hope that whatever it is that you do, uh, you are enjoying it and and uh, just kind of soaking it all in and not feeling too overwhelmed. It can kind of feel overwhelming sometimes. Um, today I think I have a lot of different things to talk about and so it may be a little bit of a longer episode. Uh, a little bit of shop stuff towards the end. There's also a, a questionnaire that I was tagged in and asked to complete uh, when I recorded and it's a knit life survey so if I feel like we have time at the end um, I'll answer some of those questions. Um, Darlene and Carrie of the Knitters Got a Knit podcast uh, tagged me in it and uh, asked if I could do it so I'll save that towards the end because just because. <laughs> So I'm sort of set up for Christmas in here. I've got my little Christmas quilt. Because I'm not in front of my design wall, um, that's, that's where it is right now in my little lame little tree. <laughs> that's about all the Christmas decorating I've done. And I don't plan on doing any more. Um, the last several years I haven't really decorated for Christmas. We go away on Christmas and so it seems kind of silly to put all the stuff up. Plus. I feel like it makes my house feel cluttered if I put a bunch of crap up. So <laughs> I'm not have never been one to really fully decorate for Christmas. I you know when the kids were little I put stuff up, put up their handmade things and whatever. But I always just feel like it makes things feel cluttery. So I've never been one to really get into the whole majorly um, decorating for Christmas. So that's what you get. That's all I've got. And I think we're going to take that little tree with us when we go away for Christmas this year. We're going to the coast as we've done the last few years with um, Robert and Michael and spend several days over Christmas um, just hanging out and enjoying each other's company. And uh, it's been, this will be the fourth year I think we've done it. And it's our new tradition and we all look forward to it every year. So um, yeah, so that's what I'll be doing over Christmas. So I'm probably not going to record. I'll probably I may record. I'll have to see if I can record before New Year's. Um, just because I, I have to feel like I have something to talk about for one, and um, being when we come back and I don't know what I'm going to feel like doing. So I may or may not be back before the end of the year. Well, let's just keep you guys all in suspense, right? <laughs> um, thank you all. For that mentioned that the camera looks better so uh, we're gonna go with it again <laughs> and um, so I'm glad I'm glad that it looks better and and I enjoyed recording with it this setup a lot better so thank you for that I also want to thank you, those of you that sent me well wishes and um, words of comfort and prayers uh, I really appreciate it I'm doing fine um, my concern is with my mom she's not doing very well and so that weighs heavily on me and um, so yeah just trying to get through this holiday season with her and help her as best I can because she's not doing so good so anyway uh, thank you to those of you that reached out and offered some hugs I appreciate it um, I'm going to start with some things that I've done uh, with a knitting machine. As you know, if you've watched in the past, I have a knitting machine that I purchased on eBay. And I forgot to show you something that I tried. And I posted it on Instagram and then I forgot to pull it out when I recorded the podcast. But I was trying to make felted fabric. So I was knitting with, with yarn that can felt. And so I chose uh, Lamb's Pride. It is a wool mohair blend. And I know that it felts. And so I ordered a bunch of it. I was going to make bags, felted bags for Christmas gifts. I was really excited about it. So, you know, not knowing how big to make things and just kind of, you know, things are new with the machine as far as like gauge and stuff like that. I just kind of winged it course I had to make it you know striped because you have to add a little bit of 
<laughs> difficulty in it. So I knitted pieces, what I would consider the front, the back, the bottom, the gussets. I made all those pieces and then I just sewed them together. I just did it with a crochet hook and just kind of latched it together because I knew that it would all felt and it didn't turn out. <laughs> this is what I ended up with. So what ended up happening is it felted a lot going this way. It felted considerably. This, that's the piece right there. It's here because this is gusset on this side. So it considerably felted up and down but didn't felt as much inwards. And I don't think the purple felt it as much as the gray, even though it's all the same yarn, because it's very, you can, you can see how it's shaped. I washed it a couple of times and um, didn't really change a whole lot the second time. I may wash it again. I'm not really sure. Um, you know, I will, of course, if I were to do something, I would shave it down so it's not so fuzzy. Um, I do have a nice sturdy felted fabric. It just, didn't keep it sh <laughs> just it just didn't work so it should be more of a rectangle and then you and then I didn't think you'd be able to see my seaming just because I thought it would felt enough and you totally do so that didn't work um, so I stopped that whole project I did obviously didn't go forward with it I thought I need to take time to figure it out if I'm gonna do it and I was trying to get Christmas gifts done so everybody got something different which they all seem to like so it's fine so I may wash it again like I said I got a pretty good dense fabric um, I may cut it I just don't know what I'm gonna do with it because now I have felt um, so yeah this is the yarn If anybody hasn't seen whoops the lamb's pride yarn it's um a really loosely twisted wool um i don't really know what else you would use it for because it's not super soft the the toothier um the yarn the i think the more it felt and so this is just really good for felting and i've knitted uh slippers in the past where you make a slipper like this big and then it felts down and and all that so I have done felting before and have had success um, my gauge may have been too loose when I knitted this on the machine I may need to tighten up the gauge and then that may make it more stiff but for now <laughs> I have a boat <laughs> so this houses all the skeins of yarn um, that I got to do the project with so unfortunately I didn't get to make this as gifts uh, but I, it was a learning experience. <laughs> uh, something I just did the other day on the knitting machine is I knitted a hat. So I found a YouTube video um, because when you're knitting on the knitting machine, you're just knitting flat. And so obviously hats are in the round. And somebody had a video on how to do a hat on the machine. So I followed her directions. I had to kind of guess on how many stitches and I sort of based it on how many stitches you would cast on for if you were knitting by hand. And basically you knit however long and then you just do a folded brim because you can, it's more time consuming and a little bit more challenging to try and do garter stitch. So it's just a folded brim and I thought this is, I'm making this for charity. Um, right now we're really cold because we're in the winter and so there's a lot of like warming centers and things like that that help give the homeless people a place to kind of come and get warm and spend the night inside because we've been in the 20s at night so I thought I would donate some hats to the warming center and if I can knit them like this and knit them within an hour or so I can produce quite a few more hats one thing that I would do differently is the way that this gal did it um i don't even remember what video it was but she just left it as a rectangle and then you cinched it and just gathered the top rather than doing decreases and i felt like it left too big of a hole so um i did couldn't i mean i pulled it as tight as i could without feeling like the yarn was going to break 
So I thought, oh, I'll make a pom-pom. Well, I've never made a pom-pom before, so I looked up a video and I made a pom-pom. Now, I probably should have made the pom-pom a little bit bigger, but I think it'll be okay considering where it's gonna go. The hat is a little bit big, so I think next time I'll decrease the amount of stitches, but I like my uh, like density of the fabric, so my stitch gauge uh, I think was good. I think I just need to decrease the amount of stitches and then kind of follow like you would when you make a hat pattern and do like a knit two together every you know however break it up to however many um based on how many stitches i put on i think i can do that so i'm going to try that next the yarn i used for this was stuff i picked up at the store it was on clearance for four dollars and 17 cents and then i think i got that at 50 percent off so it's a lion brand yarn this colorway is called playground and so it was a fun it was a fun learning experience i think it makes a fun little hat and the fact like i said the fact that i can make this in about an hour or so um is good i want to try and do it so they don't have to make a pom-pom but you know the pom-pom wasn't bad but i just don't know i wouldn't wear hats with pom-poms i don't think a little pom-pom like this i would i just wouldn't be don't think i'd be one to have a really big pom-pom on my head <laughs> i don't know i don't wear hats so i don't know um so that's that was fun on the knitting machine um, my next project i want to do is i want to try and make a poncho so uh there's a pattern by church mouse designs church mouse yarns church mouse something that is called the easy folded poncho and when i look at project pages and i look at it and i've got it in my favorites um, i just have to buy the pattern but it, you're basically knitting a rectangle and let me show you what my thought is okay so this is just some fabric but pretend this is knitted if I knit a rectangle and then I just pull it together and sew together like you know however far so that so that's attached this is your head hole so that would kind of just like flop like a head hole then you've got like a poncho and I think that's all you do with this with this pattern I'll buy the pattern just so that I have an idea measurement wise and to see if there's anything that's done differently around the neck but I think it's just a rectangle and I thought well gosh I can I can knit a rectangle super easy <laughs> on my knitting machine so I'm thinking of trying that next on there um knit a big long rectangle maybe do a cable up one side or something like that so that the bottom edge of that would have a finished edge um and just yeah just see just see how that goes i think i think it'll work so i'm it's like do i use some of my yarn or do i just go buy some like lion brand yarn and and try it with that and just that way I'm not feeling like I'm wasting my yarn if it doesn't work out or do I just figure it's going to work out and if it doesn't I rip it out I don't know but anyway I think that's going to be my next knitting machine project is to knit some sort of a poncho because I think I'd wear it see that's the thing I don't know if I'd wear it okay so okay so the not knowing if I'll wear it that brings me into something else um I oh, when did I make this it's been a while and last year I think it's been about a year ish I made the Vente shawl and if you may remember or may not but this is the shawl I loved making it it was a really nice pattern to make um, I think it's very interesting in the in the way it turns out and looks I just never wear it and when I when I chose my colors for it, I was trying to just like, if I could make everything <laughs> with purple, then I would. But I thought, oh no, you need to do something different. You can't have everything purple. Well, I never wear this. I think for one, the gray up next to my skin kind of washes me out. So I try and wear it so that I have more of the red around me, which I think looks okay. I just don't ever wear it. So this is what I'm going to do. I'm going to give it away. Um, so if you would like to have this in your wardrobe, um, and what I'm going to do is just leave a comment below the video here on YouTube 
and um, just let me know that you would be interested in winning this. You don't have to say anything special. I, um, you know, some of you like to comment, and I appreciate it. It's like having a conversation with you to just maybe re make a remark about the podcast. So, if you would also like to be entered in the drawing, <clears throat> in a drawing to win this, <clears throat> excuse me, a second. I think I got some wool in my throat. So if you'd like to win this, just put that you would like to win this. Um, so that will run until, let's have it run. You're not going to get it for Christmas because now we're getting too close to things being mailed and not getting there for Christmas. So let's, I'm looking at the calendar. Let's have, let's leave it open for two weeks. So on the 28th, like if you if you make a, a comment after the 28th, you're not entered in the drawing. So on the 28th, I will do random number, pick a winner, and then I will send you this shawl if you'd like it. So that way I figure, you know, somebody else that does like to wear these colors or thinks that they would get some use out of it because maybe you live in a colder climate, um, then it's better than it just sitting in my drawer. So comment below for that. Boom, that's done. Um, I, I wanna share some of the things that I have finished. One thing that I finished was a, um, a project that I was working on and I didn't wanna say anything until my friend got the project. So I recorded a little video um, before I sent it last week explaining what it was that I made and I did. Um, she got it yesterday, no, day before yesterday, yesterday? Day before yesterday and um, she really liked it so I will cut over to uh, me in the past explaining about this project I wanted to share uh, with you a project that I made for a friend of mine that um, I wanted to get mailed out to her soon and I didn't want to wait until I recorded the podcast because then it would be too late to mail it to her so um, I have a good friend that lives in California and her husband recently retired and so they are going to RV it full time. So they're going to live in a trailer, a travel trailer and travel all around the United States. So I tried to think of something that I could do for her for Christmas that would kind of, I don't know, help with that or be part of that part of their new life that they're going to be having. And so I decided to um, give her a travel journal or a traveler's notebook. So if you don't know what a traveler's notebook is, is it's a notebook that holds um, several mini notebooks inside. And so I made one. So this is, um, this is what she's gonna get as a traveler's notebook. And what it is, if you can see inside, is it's got several different notebooks in it. And um, so I just kinda wanted to show you and kinda go over what I did. I. I did a lot of research and looked um, on ones that you could purchase. It, there's all kinds of places where you can purchase the inserts. So you can get different styles of notebooks, you know, with calendars and, uh, you know, all, I'm just all kinds of things. And so I decided on the personal size. So there's, you know, pocket size and personal size and a B something and an A something and whatever. And I thought the personal size would be a good size to still be small enough to throw in a bag but a big enough piece of paper to to write your list or draw or whatever you're going to do with it. So um, I kind of figured out the size, the finished size that I needed. And so with my fabric, I um, the finished notebooks are three and three quarters by six and three quarters. So I knew I needed to give a little bit of room so that the edge of the notebooks are inside of the cover. And um, so I allowed for a seam allowance and then I allowed an inch thickness for the binding, so to speak. And so I just cut a rectangle in that size, uh, one for the outside, one for the inside. And then I, um, I also made an inside pocket. So that's just a couple pieces of fabric sewn together. I cut it on the diagonal, sewed it together and then laid it in there so that when I sewed around the edge of the whole uh, notebook cover it would get caught in there and so I left us you know a little bit of a slit to open it or to you know turn it back right because you have it right sides together turn it back right side around 
and then I took a piece of Peltex and Peltex is um, there's different thicknesses and this was extra firm or something like that and on one side it's got adhesive so um, and it's pretty stiff but flexible so I cut a piece just a smidge smaller than the notebook finished size so that I could get it in there and, and allow for the fabric that's then in the seams and then got it all in there and then pressed it and so it's given it a good firm um, cover for it but still flexible and then I followed um, the I looked up on on the on YouTube and uh, sea lemon is a is a good YouTube channel for um, any kind of like book making tutorials type of thing so I followed loosely followed hers and a couple others that I watched um, to see how to make them so what I did here is I have um, a couple of eyelets like grommet type eyelets I just I <laughs> dug around in my stuff and I have some scrapbooking stuff that um, had eyelets to do in scrapbooking and it and it went through the fabric okay so I put eyelets in two on the top and two on the bottom and then what you do I'm gonna pull one of these out whoa I'll pull two of them out <laughs> so um, I made the little notebooks I just took some scrapbook paper as the cover. I probably next time would do something a little stiffer, maybe more like a cardstock, but this is what I had. I used some stamps and just stamped. This is just stuff. And I found a website where you could print lined paper and graph paper and all that kind of stuff. So I printed some lined paper. And the reason why I didn't use notebook paper is because notebook paper goes like if this is paper it goes the long way and the lines go this way well I would need to cut it that way so the lines would be going vertical instead of horizontal so that really doesn't work so I printed out some lined paper and um, followed sea lemons instructions for doing a saddle stitch and I just used um, embroidery floss all six strands of embroidery floss and waxed it with beeswax and just followed her tutorial for how to do it. Um, these each have 20 pages. Then when they're folded in half, they, it becomes 40. And that's pretty, plenty thick. Um, so I made one with lined pages. I made another one. Um, <laughs> my stamps barely fit, but it says inspiration. And so inside this is, um, I don't know if you can see, but it's, like little gray dots so it kind of makes like a graph paper without it being the lines and stuff so it's good for drawing and writing lists you can use it for whatever so it, and she can even use it to um, you know stick pictures on if she has some inspiration pictures because she's an artist and then another book that I made I um, I did use cardstock on this one and it, it is a little bit thicker. It's yeah, it's probably cardstock. It's like scrapbooking cardstock. And on this one, I used mixed media paper, and I've bought a tablet that had ten pages on it, and just used all the papers from that, and cut it down, and because this it's thicker paper, so I don't know, I don't know that I'd really want to make it too much thicker than that. So she's got mixed media paper if she wants to put some watercolor to it or any kind of whatever you never know what she's going to want to do and then I also picked up a calendar that's um, all the different pictures as you go through it of different places in America so I thought since she's going to be traveling on the road um, that would be a good to have a little calendar so you have these elastics and so what you do is you s just slip the notebook inside the elastics and then that way you can change them out and so I thought well if she um, if she fills these up or decides that she needs ones that have different insides to them she can easily replace it um, so yeah and then I just you just do a little elastic on the back did another little grommet eyelet thing so that when it closes it's just an elastic closure and then I put a little charm a little heart charm on the front just to decorate it and I just got this elastic cord I got it at Walmart and it is I don't know how 
thick it is. It doesn't say that on there, but I'm thinking it's probably about a two mil. Um, so five yards was, I still have plenty from the first package. And so yeah, following Sea Lemon's instructions on how you can fit multiple notebooks in here um, by making extra elastics and then you, you kind of hook it around. So I don't know if she'll like it. I hope that she does um, and hope she can, can use it. So while they're on the road, she can just have her little notebook to just jot down ideas. Or if they're sitting somewhere and she wants to sketch or something, she can do that. So uh, yeah, my little traveler's notebook. I may make one for myself. I don't know if I would use it. Um, I don't know, because it's kind of like the new way to do like a day planner type of thing. Remember those? I remember having one of those. <laughs> so um, I just don't know that I have enough going on that I need to write all that stuff down. And I keep my calendar on my phone. And But anyway, it's still fun to have a little notepad type of thing. So that's what she's getting for Christmas. I will now be able to send this on its way down to her and um, that's surprise her. So back to the future to the podcast. So Lynn really liked it. Um, I think she's already kind of using it. So, um, so that feels good. I like to do that. I like to make things for people. I like to make things for people, especially when they like them. <laughs> because I never know. I don't just assume people are going to like what I make, you know? That's just, I'm weird about that, I guess. Like, I like it. I think it's cool you know I put a lot of thought into it and, and picking out whatever and um, you just never know if anybody else is gonna like it so <laughs> I'm glad she did um, I did finish Robert's hat so um, let me let me do this so I can kind of hide okay and you're gonna see my hands I have dye on my hands <laughs> I had kind of a messy dye day yesterday so I look like a mechanic but I'm gonna there we go. Here's Robert's hat. So um, that says that all the way around the brim. And I think he will wear this. He's, he doesn't usually ever wear anything that I make, but I think he may wear this. Um, so I had the yarn and I had mentioned that I had made Michael's hat out of this yarn and I could, didn't have the, um, the ball band. So this is what it is. It's Deborah, Deborah Norville's Every Day. It's a very soft uh, acrylic. I'm pretty sure it's acrylic. Maybe I should check that out. Yes, it's 100% anti-pilling acrylic. It is very soft yarn. Um, and then the, the color work is done in a worsted weight that I dyed. Just a very, very light gray. So that is done. <laughs> Don't want to offend anybody. I don't get offended by it, but some people do. And then I wanted to make something for um, for somebody. I haven't gifted this yet, so I don't really want to say who. I'm not sure if she watches the podcast. But um, there's a friend who uh, whose birthday is on Christmas. If I say that, you're going to know who it is. Well, anyway, if you see it, then you see it. But her birthday is on Christmas. She... Um, She's a very good caregiver and does a lot for people. And I just wanted to make sure that she got something just for her. So I decided to knit some fingerless mitts. And so I found this pattern, this 220 fingerless mitt pattern. And the reason why I chose it is because it's ribbed. And I thought that way that, just like with socks, when you do a, a ribbed sock, um, it fits a wider, range of sizes because it stretches out really good so I picked up oh, I don't have the ball band some red heart super soft or something like that and I made some fingerless mitts and so it's just ribbed on both sides I didn't do ribbing on the thumb gusset it's just a um, cast off thumb so it does kind of roll which is fine and I made her a pair of mitts um, one thing I did do with this is I um, did a majority of it with Portuguese knitting. Now I had mentioned that, that I was gonna try and learn how to do that just because I have issues with my hands going numb and that kind of thing. And I thought, well maybe, and my hands get sore. So I thought if I learn how to knit in a different way, then, um, 
then maybe the, I can, can kind of switch because continental knitting, I took that class and now that's just like left this icky feeling. <laughs> don't want to do it because I think of that teacher when I do it and I just I it just isn't for me I don't think so anyway I uh, took a class on Craftsy you know Craftsy is a great place to take classes if you haven't ever done it because once you buy the class you have that to go back to whenever you want they have sales on it all the time like they often things are on sale and you can get a class for like 20 bucks and that's worth it. I mean, you think about it, if you were to buy a DVD of a class, it'd probably be that much. And then this is just something you can watch on your library. Anyway, Craftsy had a sale because they always do. And so I bought a I bought a class on Portuguese Portuguese knitting. And if you don't know, you use a clip. So I bought this clip. I don't know what they call them. Portuguese knitting clip, I think. Hook? I don't know. So anyway, it is like a hook. Can you see here? Let me see. Oh gosh, I got it all twisted around. There we go. So it is a hook. And um, it's a magnetic magnetic pin, whatever. So it just sticks on your shirt like that. And then, oh, I don't have yarn with me. Oh, here, I'll use this Thumb's Pride mess that I've got here. What you do is... Okay. Oh, I got to tell you about my, my cowl. Okay. So you hook it in the hook and then you hold the yarn in this hand while you're knitting on this with this side. Look up on YouTube. Um, Very Pink Knits has a, a YouTube video on how to do it. Um, the one thing I liked about the class is then she then goes over like different stitches that you have to do and how to get those to work. I, I liked doing it. Um, it, I felt like it was slower though and I thought okay is it just slower because it's something that that's new to me and um, but I did find it relaxing especially working on a bigger yarn you know not fingering this is a worse weight yarn and so I just kind of just did it and going from knitting to purling being that this was ribbed and so you're switching back and forth that was easy probably similar to what you experience when you do continental knitting um, but I do find it to be a little bit on the slow side. So I tried it again when I was working on my socks and I just felt like it was being too slow for me. Um, and so I'm going to keep trying it and just keep practicing it to see if I get, can get faster at it. Um, I can't, I have to watch my hands. And so when I'm sitting in the evening and knitting, excuse me, and we're watching TV or something and I, I can knit my regular way my English style knitting and watch TV and not have to look at my knitting so this is where I got the the pin which I thought was really pretty but I got it on Etsy at Jill's beaded knit bits so you can check that out I'll put the link to that and anything else that I talk about in the description box below so that was kind of fun it was fun to just try something different um, I first started when I went to knit night so just sitting and, and being slow and just talking with everybody it was it was fine so like I said I, I'm going to continue practicing that um, but this cowl look at this I'm going to take it off this is a cowl that was surprisingly sent to me by my friend Lori isn't that oops isn't that pretty it's made out of Malabrigo and the pattern is called Dodging Raindrops. And I can't remember the designer's name. I'll put it in the description box below. But um, I love it. I've been wearing this nearly every day. Now we have been really cold. Oops, <laughs> I lose that down my bra. Um, we've been really cold, so it's been fantastic for when I go for a walk or just have to run to the store. And then I just, being that it's open and it's a pretty lightweight, shawl just based on the gauge that she knitted in and stuff that it doesn't make me feel too hot and so I've been wearing it almost every day I will wash it but yeah it was just such a great surprise Lori thank you again so very very much um it was it, yeah it was cool um oh something I got in the mail if you guys follow Christy Glass if you don't you really should I've been following her since she started but she came out with an enamel pin it's the Dominator. 
Isn't she great? So now I have a new pin to put on my bag. I have a bag that I've stuck all my pins on, but I'm thinking of making some sort of hanging something and then just putting all my pins on that rather than on my bag. I don't know because I have so many bags and then it depends on what project and so yeah, I don't know I'm just thinking about it but yeah I think she has these in her Etsy shop still I'm not sure if she still has any more but they're pretty cute it's the dominator um, as you know uh, from last episode I received a wonderfully generous advent calendar from Michelle um, of the Naughty Knitwits and um, so I've been opening them and then I've been putting them in my jar. <laughs> my jar is getting pretty full and we're only halfway there so I may have to get another jar but I've been putting them in my jar which I really am enjoying because then it just sits there and I can look at them. I'm, I'm not sure what I want to do with them it, and every time I open one up I'm like that's really pretty and the thing that's like you know with Michelle's got really good taste and she has really beautiful yarns so I know that everything's going to be just gorgeous and I thought I can put it save it and put it in my blanket my crochet blanket I'm still working on my magic ball and I was feverishly trying to get through it but you know with the magic ball there's actually a lot of yarn on that and so it takes a while to get through it so I thought okay instead of trying to like feel rushed and have to get to it because I was doing some Christmas knitting and stuff which really did need to get done um, I, I decided to put them in my jar and decide what to do later something else that I thought of doing um, I looked online and I found this it's called the planina wrap and this is a pattern that is designed by Shara Shara what's your name Shara Maid, she has a podcast. She's out of Australia. She has a really lovely podcast. She's very creative and does a lot of knitting and crocheting. And so this is a knitted. She also has a pattern for, for, for crochet, if you want to crochet this. But the idea was to use up your Advent minis. And so I actually thought, well, I'll just I'll work on that. I'll get it started. And then every day when I open a new ball or a new little drawer, I'll just add to it. And I couldn't. I was having a hard time because it's an I-cord cast on. I-cord cast on, I guess. And I'd never done one. So I had to figure that out. And there's her instructions weren't really matching the YouTube videos I was finding. So I messaged her. She cleared it up. Um, some other people made comments um, in a Ravelry group and cleared it up for me. Well, by then, it's already like a couple days later. And I'm like, I can't catch up. But I thought, because they all do, you know, if I carefully selected what goes next to what, or I just randomly do it, I think it would make just a really col colorful throw, a little wrap um, to go around my shoulders. I do do that in the evenings, um, and I usually just throw on my campsite shawl. But I thought this could be kind of fun. So I'm either going to do this, or I'm going to put it in my blanket. So let me know if you have an opinion on which way you think I should go because I'm not really set on either one. I just think it would be kind of fun to do something that would keep them together. So if I put them in my blanket, I would do all of my minis from the advent calendar all like together in, in a section. So that would go together for that. Um, I did finish one sock. <laughs> so here's my finished sock, Miss Sock. Um, I was really hoping to get the pair done by Christmas and I know I still have like 10 days or whatever but we're getting together with Jim's family on Sunday and I'm about that far on my second sock. I doubt in the next four days <laughs> I'm going to finish the sock. I was even tempted to send Christy, <laughs> Christy of the Relatively Crafty podcast. Um, she knits socks like super fast and she's like the sock knitting queen I thought I'll send it to Christy and let her finish my sock no that's just dumb I enjoy it I just I had to get some some gift knitting done so my next sock will have a red heel and a green toe so they'll be um, offset that way but I love the way they turned out and these will be really fun Christmas socks and you know what I was where I put on my pair from last year's Christmas socks <laughs> and one sock I still had all the ends to weave in like, have I been wearing this with all these ends in there? So I actually am going to weave the ends in this year. <laughs> so
so um so that's that uh as i had mentioned last time i was just not feeling very inspired wasn't in the right headspace to to um be dyeing yarn so the other day i actually got the dye pots out i thought you know what just dye colors that have have sold out that you need to replenish so i'm not having to come up with something new and it's not always a matter of not finding color inspiration i can see something and go, oh those are, those are great colors it's a matter of like how am i going to get that onto yarn and make it look the way i have it in my head so that takes some brain space and when you don't have the right brain space it just doesn't happen but i did get the dye pots out the other day and so i have been doing some dyeing which is why i ended up with like black under my fingernails and stuff i was having an issue with the black yesterday <laughs> black dye in the powder form the powder is like the finest it's finer than any of the other colors so just a teeny little bit somewhere is like everywhere and you go to clean it up and you think you're wiping you know like oh just a little bit and then it turns and get water on it and it turns into dye and then you've got it all over your hands should wear gloves i know but i usually do just not when i was mixing it so anyway i dyed some colors that were running out and um playing i thought okay and then like one pot just pick a couple skeins and try and come up with something new so i've got a couple new ones that i'm working on um i'm not going to show anything yet because nothing new is going to go into the shop until after the first of the year but um it felt good to to get my feet wet again in that and i think i just needed the, the break that i took from it but something else that i've been busy doing um if you watch the naughty nitwits podcast or you watch christie's of uh, relatively crafty you will see that I part of the gift that I gave them was um, notebook covers or notebooks with covers and Melissa of Nitty by Nature was encouraging me to make them and put them in my shop and I appreciate the little nudge from her for that because like I said when I make stuff I think I like it but is anybody else gonna like it so what it is is it's a fabric cover and I'll just show you some of them this is one one of the styles with the llamas and it's just got um, a composition notebook inside with a bookmark tab so you can buy these notebooks that different color the covers will look a little different but um, you can pretty much buy these anywhere and they're always the same side size regardless of what the front looks like or who makes them so I thought you know that I like notebooks like this because um, like podcast notes or even like as a knitting journal or something like that um, and then you can replace the notebook super easy and it will fit so like this one's got kind of a orangey red interior um, this one I'm still working on this I have to finish top stitching it's got more of like a teal interior so I've got a couple of those and then I played with um, quilting on some faux suede I thought I wonder if that would work <laughs> and I think it turned out pretty good it's really hard to capture the the threads that make up the sway the make up the quilting in it I don't know if you're seeing it um, so it has like a blue maybe if I go closer a blue thread uh, design and so then it's got like a blue interior knitted hearts so some of this fabric is um, leftover from bags then it's like i didn't quite have enough to make another bag with but i had enough to do this with and then i've got a couple of sock monkey um i'm holding it yeah so i'm gonna put these in the shop um i've got to take pictures of them because i haven't done that and um kind of get a feel if that's something that that might be something people would want so the way I'm going to put them in the shop is you can buy the cover only or you can buy the cover with the with the notebook um, and then the note you know you can pick these up for like under two dollars but I'm going to charge like three bucks more for them because the shipping to ship it with the notebook is considerably higher and there's no way on Etsy for me to make a difference in the shipping so the additional amount will help cover the shipping cost um, or you can just buy the notebook cover and buy the notebook at your local store so you'll have that option so um 
I'll pro probably post something on Instagram when I have those ready to go in. Like I said, I've got a photograph of myself to finish top stitching on some of the llama ones. Um, and then when I pulled out the llama fabric, where is it? It reminded me, um, it just made me think of my llamas. I used to, it's, I don't think it's anything I've ever mentioned on here, but I used to raise llamas. Um, we did that for an, uh, several years. Uh, we lived out in the country and we had some llamas and, um, you know, it was something for the kids to kind of learn from. And we thought that they might, might do 4-H with it, but our area didn't have a strong enough 4-H program to to do that and so it never really went anywhere and we ended up selling the llamas if i can find some pictures um i'm pretty sure i have some but they were pretty cute um and and interesting it was an interesting experience to have have llamas and breed them and have babies and that whole thing so it made me think of my llamas and think of good memories of the past um when the kids were little and stuff so that's the end that's it Ta-da! we're done so thank you again for being here. Um, like I said, I will try and record again before the new year. Um, we'll see what happens. You will know. You'll be the first to know <laughs> if I do or not. Uh, so in the meantime, enjoy your holidays. Enjoy your family and friends. And um, uh, yeah, thank you. And I, it's always hard to say goodbye. It's hard to say goodbye. Isn't there a song like that? I don't know. Anyway, <laughs> I will see you guys all the next time whenever that is. Thank you for watching and um, 